With their historic voyages to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, NASA's twin Voyager probes that were launched in 1977 astounded the entire world. 45 years later, both missions are still in interstellar space. Researchers are now using the Voyager data in a variety of methods to solve mysteries within and beyond our solar system, some of which are more recent than the mission. In addition to having about 38,000 times less memory than modern cell phones and transmitting data at a rate that is about 3 million times slower than a 5G internet connection, the twin Voyager spacecraft from NASA also has an eight-track tape recorder for storing data. These spacecraft have become time capsules of their era. In spite of this, the Voyagers continue to lead space exploration. While no other spaceship from Earth has ever flown before, to the extent the twin Voyager 1 and 2 probes are exploring. Voyager 1 made the first ever entry into interstellar space in August 2012, an area between stars that are packed with debris that was ejected when surrounding stars died millions of years ago. With the Deep Space Network, or DSN, both spacecraft are still sending scientific data about their surroundings. Join us as we explore the remarkable journey of the Voyager spacecraft and the mysterious communications it still sends to Earth from a far distance. How then does the Voyager communicate with us from so far away? To whom has it sent communications? Is it alerting us to something that could be dangerous? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. The mission, since no other spacecraft from Earth has ever flown before, the twin Voyager 1 and 2 probes keep on exploring. They were both launched in 1977 and are currently more than three times as far from Earth and the Sun as Pluto. The aim of the Voyager spacecraft is to characterize the far outer heliosphere, the far off solar wind, and their interactions. We have been able to investigate the farthest limits of our heliosphere during this part of the expedition, as well as make the first hesitant steps in the areas that lie in between the sun-dominated zone and interstellar space. The termination shock, where the solar wind rapidly slows down due to collision with interstellar plasma, has been traversed by Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 both passed through the shock in December 2004 and August 2004, 2007, respectively. With NASA's Deep Space Network, both spacecraft are transmitting information about their surroundings. A special exploration mission is being carried out by the Voyager spacecraft. Building on the legacy of one of NASA's most fruitful and prolific missions, the two spacecraft are exploring hitherto unexplored regions of space. The NASA Heliophysics System Observatory's Voyager Interstellar Mission V I M is essential for achieving a number of its scientific goals. The Voyagers are the only components of the observatory that are, for now and in the foreseeable future, making measurements in the farthest region of the heliosphere. As such, the mission addresses directly a number of challenges. For example, Understanding the global structure of the space carved out of the interstellar medium by the Sun, the distribution of magnetic fields and matter throughout the solar system, and the interaction of the solar atmosphere with the local interstellar medium, and understanding the basic physics in processes observed in solar and space plasmas. The point of interest is that both of these marvels have exceeded the lifespan 
for which they were intended, but still they are sending information back to Earth. Is it valuable or not? Let's dive into the details. Is that Voyager 1 in reality? NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, which exited the asteroid belt before Voyager 2 on December 15, 1977, was launched after the latter. It began its Jovian imaging mission in April 1978, when it was around 165 million miles, 265 million kilometers, away from the planet. Images captured by January 1979 showed Jupiter's atmosphere to be more turbulent than it had been during the Pioneer flybys in 1973 to 1974. Beginning on January 30th, 1979, Voyager 1 took images every 96 seconds for a total of 100 hours. This led to the creation of a color time-lapse movie that displayed Jupiter's 10 spins. The spacecraft entered the Jovian moon system on February 10th, 1979, and in early March, it found a thin ring encircling Jupiter. The encounter's Voyager, one's closest encounter with Jupiter, was at 12.05, UT March 5, 1979, at a range of about 174,000 miles, 280,000 kilometers, following which it encountered several of Jupiter's moons, including Amalthea at a 261,100 mile or 420,200 kilometer range. Io, 13,050 miles or 21,000 kilometers. Europa, 45,830 miles or 733 kilometers. Where will this Voyager mission take us in the future? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you 